Hey, how's it going, YouTube? Jacob here from the J2H channel. Uh, today we are... I don't know why I did that. This has nothing to do with wrestling. Um, it's just who I am. We are ranking the Pixar movies today. All 23 of them. And I own all but one, two, three... Four, five of them physically. So hopefully it'll be an interesting watch as well as a listen. I know ranking videos are usually for like a listen. I don't, I'm not actually going to hold all 23 up and rank them, but uh, it's going to be probably a longer video, so let's get into it. My wife and I decided right after the new year um, that we wanted to watch and watch and rank the uh, the, the Pixar movies, because there's so many of them and so many of them are good. Um, that we That's what we wanted to do, and with how busy my work schedule is, it took us two months to watch to watch all of them, um, but we did it. I'm very excited, and I love that we did. Uh, I'm glad I watched all of these movies, and I will continue to watch all the Pixar movies because they're so good. It's such a great selection of movies, and I've I posted them so often. I had a lot of comments: "Are you going to do a video? Or are you going to do a video?" And my initial thought was I hadn't even thought about it. Like I just wanted to do this for fun, but I owned so many of them that I was like, you know what? Yes, we're going to do a video. So here's your video. You wanted it. You asked for it. I delivered. Let's check it out. Watch the uh, watch. Let's watch all the Pixar movies. This will be a very long video. No, we're gonna review them all. Um, the first three, first four, I don't actually own. One of them isn't released yet, but I'm not gonna buy it when it is anyway. So I just have sticky notes. So bear with me. The first one is the Good Dinosaur. So I was under the assumption that the worst Pixar movie was universally my next film. And I got a comments immediately like, no, it's it's The Good Dinosaur. The Good Dinosaur is not great. Um, on the podcast recently, Joe and I talked about some of the issues they had. Sounds like they fired the voice staff and writing staff after this film was like semi-done and kind of just restarted and hired the new voice cast, which I didn't love. And um, the movie is a cute movie. If this was just like... This was just a Disney movie. It has nothing to do with Pixar. Like, it's just a kid's animated film. It would have been okay. But when you compare it to all of these Pixar movies, and that'll be a running theme, they're so good. All of these movies are so good. It's a lot like, and I'll talk about this too, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The Hulk and I think the first, the second Thor movie are universally described or panned as the worst Marvel movie. But they're still three to three and a half star movies. That's just how good the 23... Um, hopefully by the time you're watching this, maybe 24, come on Black Widow, um, in, in, in movies, in theaters. Um, they're so good. That's just how in comparison to. But with these, that seems to be my my, my grief, my, my guff. Um, with the exception of The Good Dinosaur. I think The Good Dinosaur, even if it wasn't Pixar, would not be a great film. Um, I liked the story. I, there was a lot, but a lot of it I didn't like. The kiddo acting like a dog... I thought was awful. I didn't like that at all. Um, the story was okay. Uh, it's really cute and it's really sad, especially at first and towards the end. Um, it had the heart of a Pixar movie, but it just it fell flat for me. I did not enjoy it. The kiddo lost it. My, my son lost interest in it. The wife lost interest in it. Um, I think the other reason we kind of kept watching is we were eating dinner. Um, so not not my bag. Um, though I won't say it's a bad movie. It's just not it's not great. Um, I think I give it two stars, two and a half. Like, it's getting down there. It, it's not something I'll watch again, not something I'll purchase. So, the next up is Cars 2, which I thought was universally panned, or I thought it was a universal belief that this was the worst Pixar movie. And it's not as bad as Good Dinosaur. It's kind of almost an entire level not as bad. Cars 2 still has the same characters as the Cars movies, the same great characters. Though with the Cars, the second car movie, they moved Lightning McQueen, um, the Butterscotch Stallion, Owen Wilson, out of the spotlight and moved Larry the Cable Guy's Mater in, um, which was odd. I didn't like that as much. Um, and they made it an espionage film. And I hated cars driving boats, cars climbing boats, cars rappelling. So much of that stuff took me out of and made Cars an unbelievable movie. And what I mean by that is that I can believe that the first Cars movie, Cars talk and have eyeballs and focus and they can go and drive and live normal lives without a driver. And I, that's believable. It didn't take me out of the movie. But the second they started driving boats, I was like, this is unrealistic. Unrealistic. Are you kidding me? 
it's a Pixar movie about toys. There's bugs that talk in these movies. There's skeletons that just cling together and live. There's toys that talk to each other. And this one seemed unrealistic. That's insane. So, and we'll talk about that with another one that will be a little more controversial. So, I did not like Cars 2, though I believe that's pretty much a given. Um, the next one is the latest one, and not yet available. I don't know if I'll buy this one. But this is where it starts to be, I liked this movie. Like, Soul, this is Soul. Soul is the next film. Um, so, I believe, so you got 23, 22, so the 21, uh, Soul which came to the no came to Disney Plus on Christmas Day 2020. It's getting a physical release, I believe, in April or May. Um, I, I swear I have some of these, so this it'll get. Just bear with me. Um, soul is a heavy movie. Obviously, the concept being this guy died and his soul had his a redemption. It's a soul redemption story, so it's a little deep and dark for me for a kids movie. Um, I thought I thought it was a fun watch. It was the the ending is really good. The ending is like four star, almost four and a half, but you have to sit through kind of a two and a half, three star movie. So to me, it gets three stars and even three stars, uh, which is already to me a good movie. If your three stars are above, like we're already in the good movies and we're only like twenty one in or we're only two in. So I like Soul. I didn't hate it. I just think. Uh, so I watched it on Christmas or right around Christmas, and then I watched it again at the end of February. And I don't know if I watched it too close together or what, but I just did not enjoy the rewatch as much. It, it kind of sunk, I think it sunk half a star upon that second rewatch because there just wasn't, I don't know, just not, not my favorite. Um, this next one might be controversial because I remember liking this movie a lot, and upon a rewatch I didn't. And that's, it's, again, it's one I don't, it's the last one I don't own, I believe. Up. So, the first ten minutes of Up is the peak. The first ten minutes is adorable. It's sad as fuck, especially if you're married to some, you know, to your soulmate that you believe is your soulmate. It's sad. It's so sad. And it's so good, those first ten minutes. And then, I remember liking the dog and the kiddo, and I just, the, the, I don't remember his name, that's why I'm saying kiddo. I don't remember the character's name. Um... I don't know. I just felt this movie, and again, I don't mean to. I don't mean to bring up the unbelievableness, but there's a point where this old man, who's got to be like, I mean, his wife's dead. He's, I think, he's in his seventies. He's retired. He lost his house, but then he, you know, again, I believed and I was okay with the the house going up and traveling to Africa with balloons or South America. I can't remember which. But yet, the second he starts pulling it with a garden hose nailed to the the house. That's what made it unbelievable. And it's weird that that's, that's the sticking point, but to me it was just like, I mean, we're getting really into the weeds here. And then I liked the snipe. I don't remember if they actually actually named the bird, but we'll just call it the snipe. But I didn't like this as much. I think I still gave this. I think I still gave it three. I don't think I went up to three and a half. But it was, it was enjoyable. I enjoyed it, just not as much as I thought. And I tell you, those first ten minutes, if you don't cry, we're in those first ten minutes, like, man... So good. So much heart. And then it just kind of, you know, it's got a good story, especially the end with um, the, the re relationship between the main character and the uh, the Boy Scout. But I don't know. not my favorite, I'll tell you that. It, it really, of all the movies, I've, I had seen that before and my wife enjoyed it. Um, it sunk in the, I think it dropped like six rankings. Um, I just, I don't know why. This It just, I didn't feel it this time. Uh, the next movie is a favorite of my wife, which is why we own it physically. Um, Brave. So Brave, we got the 4K there. Um, I liked Brave. I did. I liked the uh, the kiddos, the, the the trilogy. I've said that a lot. Kiddos, this is my vernacular. Um, I liked the, uh, the the triplet boys. There they are, the triplet boys. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm a sucker for, like, Irish accents and Irish culture. I'm Irish myself, but very little. Um, the bears, the mother being a bear, and the relationship between those two. It worked. Clearly, it's not my favorite um, but I enjoy it. I enjoy Brave. Um, not really much I can say negative about it. it. wasn't as funny as the other ones. Although it, I say again, it's more realistic, but there's a fucking, her mom becomes a bear. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. But I enjoyed Brave. I really did. I, I'm going to keep this one physically. I've even upgraded this from Blu-ray at one point. So, next film probably going to be a little overly harsh to this because I don't believe it should be made. And especially once you figure out where 1 and 2 and 3 sit. Um, it's the fourth movie. Uh, Toy Story 4. 
So I own the 4K steelbook of this just because it was cheap. Um, I was always going to own this movie. But I feel like I'm overly harsh on this movie, um, which is why it still ranks higher than several of these. The actual movie itself is good. Me, as a Toy Story fan since literally the day it came out, I can't get behind this film. I don't think the fourth movie needed to be made. I think the idea of the first three movies is you don't want these two to be separated. They do everything in their power to stay together and stay with each other. And then the fourth movie, they spend the entire movie apart, and then they just decide at the end, spoiler alert, although I don't really care, that they're just going to be apart for the rest of their lives. They're going to go their separate ways. Like, what you killing the franchise? Which doesn't bother me because they should have stopped it too anyway. But I just, I just hated it. I hate... I didn't like Forky, although the second time, I, Forky was kind of the, the shining star of this movie. I hated um, Ducky and Bunny. I just I did not like that at all. Duke Kaboom was great, um, though Ducky and Bunny's probably because I'm not a huge fan of Keegan Michael Key or K or these talentless pieces. Um, so Toy Story Four lower on my rankings than probably it deserves. Well, not really because it's my rankings. So it's still a, it's. I still would rather watch this than all the others. I just don't like that it was made. Uh, that's my thing. I don't like that it exists. Um, so there you go. This next one was a first time watch for me, which was really cool. And I got to rewatch it, or first time watch it in 4K. That's Inside Out. So, really, really fun movie here, I'll say. I uh, love the cast. If you love Parks and Rec and or The Office, the cast in here is awesome. Uh, you get Phyllis. Right there in, I think sadness. I can't remember the emojis. And then Amy Poehler from Parks and Rec is is like joy or happiness. Probably joy. Happiness seems like a like a, not a like not the actual name, but a really cool movie. Having watched this for the first time, I love the story. The the uh, again with the heart, man. These Pixar movies will just crush you emotionally, which is great. Um, they, they can make you feel and react to a movie because some of the movies nowadays. I say nowadays, some movies just don't, you just don't react. You don't feel any for those characters. You don't care what happens to them, good or bad. This movie, you care about kind of everything. All about the struggles. In the end, with uh, some of the puberty stuff, just good. It's a good movie. I'm glad I grabbed this in 4K, and it'll, uh, I think it'll, I think it'll stay on the shelf. Uh, the next film, I actually don't own this, though maybe I will at some point. Um, it is the third installment of the Cars films. Um, the car, the third Cars film really did um, redeem the franchise to me. Uh, I liked the callbacks to Doc Hudson. I loved the Lightning McQueen and his protege's relationship. I liked that it focused, again, super heavily on Lightning McQueen, who is the star of these films. It almost felt like they did the complete 180, and now Mater was way out of the way. Like, they weren't best buds anymore. I think they still are. But he was just, like, not in this movie a ton. And it's not like Larry the Cable Guy's doing much nowadays. So, um, yeah, I liked it a lot, actually. Um, I liked it just as much, if not better. No, not better, obviously, based on the rankings. But just as much as the original. It felt a lot like the original and kind of ignored the second, the second movie, which I can't blame it for because that movie was... Um, Something else, the, th the second Cars movie. But the third movie, it really did. It brought the franchise back up, so I don't have an overly sour taste on the whole franchise. I really enjoy the third movie. I, I just did. Um, which brings me to my next one, which is Cars. The original Cars just, just squeaks over the first film. Um, so this is the actual Blu-ray. It's the only film I own on Blu-ray, so maybe I'll have to upgrade. Um, I, I enjoy the, the Cars movie uh, quite a bit. I remember watching this the original time. Um the original when it when it came out back in like oh six I should know this I just watched it um I, I thought it said two thousand two but that's the code that expires in twenty twenty two um I really enjoyed this my son really enjoyed this one I know my nieces and nephews do well I don't I know my nephews do I don't know if my niece enjoys it um I have this on my phone currently the one I'm filming on downloaded because my son enjoys it so much um really cool I like the the dynamic between Lightning McQueen I like. I like how it worked out with him and Doc Hudson. Uh, I enjoy his relationship with Larry the Cable Guy, a.k.a. Mater. Um, is my camera off? I don't want to mess with it. Um, during the whole film, I really, I think the first Cars movie really worked, and I liked what it did. Um, so the next one, another first-time watch. I'll say, 
first time watch all the way through. I've watched part of this several times. My sister used to own the DVD um, it, when she came out, or when it came out, she was she was younger, so it skipped a lot. And I've never never had an enjoyable watch with this until this one, and I really enjoyed it. This watch, um, Rat Tattooey. So I finally got to check it out. Obviously, glorious HD. It looks phenomenal, but I finally got to check it out in 4K. It's a really good movie. I liked the relationship between, I believe it's Remy, Remy the Rat, uh, and his, help, his pal Linguini. I love the Linguini's heritage, that storyline. Um, really cool. I love the cooking. I loved the, really liked the story with the cook, not the cook, the food critic and stuff. Um, yeah. B big one for me. My wife is a little down on this film, but that's because I think she watched it too many times. Uh, but... We can, we can, I can get that. I can relate. Uh, though I enjoyed this movie. Gonna make the shelf on 4K. Um, so there you go. Um, I'm saying um and next up a lot. So I'll, I'll try to try to put the kibosh on that. Toy Story 3. This rewatch, I liked a lot more than the previous... I think I've only seen this one time. The previous time I had watched this because... I... Knowing that there's a fourth movie, this one doesn't seem as bad. When the first came out, A is super sad. Like, this came out when I was a teenager. Probably 2012, if not earlier. Um, I remember, like, the the, uh, the pit scene with all the fire and stuff. Man, I bawled. I was a high schooler bawling. And... I don't know what I was going to say. I, don't, I still don't think even this one needs to be made. I think they should have stopped it, too. Though, now that I've watched this a second time and I've watched it in the continuality and knowing there's a fourth one I don't mind that it could have ended on this one I really don't think Toy Story 4 needed to exist but I can get behind Toy Story 3 I think Toy Story 3 is enjoyable uh, but still significantly like when you say in one or two are placed you're going to appreciate how much I kind how, you know, it makes sense based on 3 and 4 I think the more when you see where I put 1 and 2 but Toy Story 3 Awesome steelbooks, by the way. We're getting into the really nice editions. Um, this steelbook is awesome. The actual physical release. Uh, I just said uh, again. Another. No. Is this the first one? No, it's, this, it's a sequel to one of my favorites. Uh, you'll see this, especially with the next movie, although that one's better. Um, finding. Or finding. A little spoiler. A little foreshadowing. Masha's University. This is the long awaited prequel to Monsters, Inc. I've watched this. I've actually only watched this twice. The last year, during the quarantine, the first time I watched this originally. Excuse me. And I remember enjoying it, especially because I watched them back-to-back. -back. Though now it's been almost a year. I had, I've had i watched it again, and it kind of felt, kind of, kind of felt like a chore to get through. I, I, I didn't enjoy it as much. Maybe it's because I know how it ends up. I don't think this is as good as the first one, clearly. Though it's it's not bad. It's still a good movie. It's just not... I don't think it's on the same level. Um, I couldn't tell you anything bad about it. Uh, the characters are cool. I love the constant, like... It's not really a callback because it takes place first, but the references, foreshadowing of the first movie, I just... Um, I think it was too little too late, if I'm being 100% honest. Uh, which is kind of the case with this one. Finding Dory. Again, an amazing slip cover. Or, er, Steelbook. Um, the 4K Steelbook. Another uh, first time I'd ever watched this. Uh, though I was very excited. I can't believe it took me as long to watch this. Because I love Finding Nemo. Um, but there's um again. God damn it. This should be a drinking game. This was this was really enjoyable. It was in, more enjoyable than uh, Monsters University. Probably because it's an actual sequel I got the original voice cast, though so did Monsters University. Um, the characters in it, you got... Uh, these two are both from Modern Family, which I thought was great. Uh, Ty Burrell as the... I forget, he's some sort of dolphin, was fantastic. Uh, Ed O'Neill as the octopus. Really liked the family dynamic between Dory and her family. And I've always wondered, as someone who grew up with Finding Nemo, how it worked out between Dory and... Is it Morin? It's not Morin. Norman? What's his name? What's Nemo's dad's name? Norman? It's not Norman. 
something close. But I was wondering how those two ended up. Like, how did it work out between those two? So you kind of get a, a taste of that, which is really cool. Um, Morin? What is his name? Finding Dory. Such with an M, right? I don't know. It's going to drive me nuts. Next up, this film, I think, is underrated. I don't think this gets enough love, especially... Um, when I showed this to my wife. She was like, I don't like this one. Like, I just never got behind this movie. And I was like, this movie is wall -E. Like, this movie's adorable. It's one of the cute... I think this is the cutest movie out of all the Pixar movies. Like, the Eva Wally stuff is adorable. Wally's so cool, man. I love Wally. Got callbacks to Short Circuit in this, which I loved as a kid. Uh, the relationship between him and the, uh, excuse me, the um, pilot, uh, which is Murray from uh, the Goldbergs, and the, the plant, and the, what happens to Earth, and I love the old president who is um, Ty Burrell's dad in Modern Family. I don't remember that actor's name. Man, what a cool little flick. I just I just love Wally and Eva. I don't know why. I, I mean, I've, I remember watching this movie at the drive-in, fun fact. So... I even upgraded this recently. If you looked, it's still sealed because I've got I had I grabbed this after I watched it uh, recently. So I have the Blu-ray. It's actually right behind me, going to Pam um, because I, I I upgraded this immediately. I didn't. I remembered watching this when I watched it. Like, why don't people talk about this more? It's so cute. It's an adorable little movie. If you agree, let me know in the comments. I don't think Wally gets enough love. Speaking of doesn't get enough love in the Pixar movie, only the second Pixar movie ever. And a really good one. I, I enjoy this one. I've watched this one the more in the last five years than I have since I was, like, a ute. Since I was, like, five? I watched this movie quite a bit, and then I just kind of stopped. When I got the 4K, I rewatched it, and I rewatched it for this marathon. Pixar. A Pixar. <laughs> Pixar is a bug's life. Uh, like I said, it's only the second sequel. It's only the second movie. Uh, and never got a sequel. I, I, prob I think it's because a couple of the cast members have passed. Um, and it's, it's way too late now. I really do think so. This gets so much... Uh, this this gets overlooked a lot. Probably because it's only the second one. And they've since made all of it. A Toy Story franchise and a Cars franchise. This is a good film. It really is. Uh, it holds up. The, the, the humor is great. Dennis Lear as a ladybug is hilarious. Heimlich. Um... I know this film came out the same year as Ants, and I still, to this day, not so much now because I've watched this twice in the last year, I don't confuse it as much with Ants, but as a kid I did. And I couldn't remember which one because I don't like Ants, um, the film. I couldn't remember which one to watch because I get them confused. And I don't anymore, I don't own Ants, so it's really easy to know. Um, but yeah, Bugs Life. I think this one, this is another one that I don't think gets enough love. A long-awaited sequel that I believe did hold up. Incredibles 2. This is a good movie. This was a really fun watch. Um, this one's thick. I think it's got like three or four discs. I bought this one the second it came out. Um, Incredibles 2. I actually watched the first movie in in uh, hype for the second movie because I had never watched it. And my wife was so high on The Incredibles. You've got to check them out. you got to check them out. Glad I did. The Incredibles 2, I think, is on the same level as the first one. It's not ranked higher then, so it's like right about the same level. Really enjoyed this movie. I love, love, love the Jack-Jack stuff in here as someone who has a... He's one at the time of filming this, uh, but a, a, a younger kiddo. Very relatable. Uh, Mr. Incredible being a stay-at-home dad. Super relatable. Um, though without the superpowers, obviously. It goes without saying. The raccoon stuff with Jack-Jack. Man, I just like this movie. Um, the I believe her name's April, um, the daughter, stuff with the teenage boy and her relationship and the, the snot scene and man, it's so good. What a what a wonderful film. Next up, this took me by surprise. I've talked about this since in my uh, Disney Movie Club unboxing. I'll go into it a little more here. Um, Coco. This film blew me out of the water. When I looked at the the skew of Pixar movies, all twenty three of them. I had this circled as, like, I'm really not looking forward to that. Like, I thought this was going to be a chore. I put it on on a Sunday morning uh, before we had plans because I was like, hey, even if we don't film, if, even if we don't finish this, no big deal. I was way, way wrong. This movie's fantastic. I purchased from Disney Movie Club that, that unboxing. I made that whole purchase because of this movie. I wanted to own this so badly, so quickly. 
Uh, what a fantastic movie. What an amazing theme, story. Man, I couldn't say enough about this film. I'm sure on a rewatch, I could see this jumping over the first Incredibles movie. Um, I'm tempted now just to switch them, though I'm already kind of filming. Um, this was good. This was real, I guess, foreshadowing, or foreshadowed my next movie. Uh, this was so good. I've never been more wrong about a film in my entire life, and that's not an understatement. I just, I was down on this, wasn't excited for it. I was way wrong. My, my wife was blown away by it. She complimented it the whole way to wherever we were, whatever we were doing afterwards. My son was, like, watching it the whole time while we were eating breakfast. Just awesome. Can't say enough positive things. Uh, yeah. I, w I was wrong. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this movie in high praises forever now because it just blew me away. Really appreciate it. I've talked about this already, so I won't, uh, I won't pretend like it's a surprise. Incredibles. Uh, this is ranked higher than the first one, or the second one, and higher than Coco, though I don't know if it should be. Um, this one I can appreciate as a comic book fan more now, having read Watchmen. It's got really, it's got some similarities to Watchmen, which I liked. Um, not that other people won't get the reference. If you've ever seen the show or heard anything about it, you can get the references. Uh, it's, it's become almost a cult favorite with, uh, Frozone, um, and, oh, what's the other guy? Underminer, no, not Underminer, that's Ham. Um, by the way, I loved looking for John, is it Her Herzbog? Ham. I loved looking for him in all these Pixar movies, and just, another reason I don't like Soul as much is it was the first film, excuse me, I believe it's the first film not to have him. I could be wrong, I could be way off base, but I didn't find his voice. Um, I love that he's in all these movies. What a cool little, like, Easter egg for when you're watching all of these movies. Herzbog, it's Ham. It's Ham. It's the he's in everything. Um, so yeah, The Incredibles. Um, who's the guy? Necromancer, narcissist. I don't know his name. This guy, Jason Lee, I believe. Um, what a classic 4K cover too. I wish I would have watched this movie when I was younger. I didn't watch this until the year the second movie came out. I think I would have appreciated it even back then, but. What a cool movie. I really enjoy The Incredibles. Uh, the, when he sells insurance, that, oh God, it's so so much fun stuff. But he's just doing the, the big thing, and he's got the pipe in his office with his... Oh, so good. So good and a little relatable. So, the first Pixar movie, I remember when this came in theaters. Now, I, don't, I didn't personally go to theaters to see it, <clears throat> but this was the first one I remember being advertised. So, this one is early... Early, early 2000s, I believe. I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> I'm sorry. This film, the second... I've watched this so many times. I've watched this so many times, I currently... I don't know if I still have it. I had a portable DVD player. The disc, the DVD of this is stuck in it because we watched this so many times. Um, I've now upgraded to that beautiful 4K steelbook. Um, I, I lost my shit a lot during these movies. Uh, I, you know with being a husband now, especially being a, a, a dad to a son who kind of understands movies now, and he, um, even just being a new dad, um, some of these movies just made me lose my shit, and I'm, an, I'm a very emotional person, especially with movies, um, and with my own kid especially, so uh, we'll talk about one of those instances very soon, but the, mo the, the ending of this movie got me one of, the, one of the biggest ones with my reaction, but not my biggest. We'll get into that. Um, so a very, very heartfelt um, best feature film, 2003. So 2003, it seems to be this movie. But even more so, it's so nostalgic because I remember this. It was one of the first DVDs I ever owned. Actually, I think my brother technically owned it. I'll just always remember this film, and I, I, I look on it fondly. I think the... Man, what is his name? Norman? Dory. Marlin! It's on here, thank God. I didn't remember it. I'm not that good. Marlin. I'm sure that was driving you guys nuts. I'm going to have comments all over. Marlin. Um, his search for Dory and the seagull thing and the uh, pelican stuff and just just great. Uh, another classic. I remember this for the blue VHS tape. Uh, shout out to you if you remember the blue VHS tape with the white clamshell for Monsters, Inc. Uh, what a good movie. Another. That's probably the second cutest mo movie movie, film, that's what that was, um, with Boo, and when she says kitty, this is a one, whoa, so, the Boo with the kitty stuff is so cute, and, uh, you know, put that thing back in there, or so help me, and just, 
Man, such a classic. I'm a sucker for nostalgia, which you'll see with these next three of the next, or with this one, three of the next four are really nostalgic for me. The blue VHS tape will always stick in my mind when I see this, even though this is DVD, Blu-ray, 4K. Three, three upgrades since then, but I'll always remember it. And uh, Sully, played by John Goodman. I got a soft spot for John Goodman, so it's really cute. And just the kitty and the, the ending with they finally find the piece of the door. And there's just so much good stuff. We're getting into like the, I think this one's like a four and a half. Um, I think this is the last four and a half. This next one's a five. So, And it's one of the newest ones. It's the second, it's the first 2020 Pixar film. Onward. This movie, oh man. This one made me like ugly cry the second time I watched this. The first time I didn't know it was coming. And it didn't uh, didn't quite register uh, that I knew it was coming, so I, I still had a genuine reaction. But the second time, man, just openly weeping, ugly cried. What a fantastic movie! Um, I guess again, as um, I'm not going to get too much into it, but the relationship between the two brothers, I'm a sucker for that. If you know me personally, you know a little bit more about why. Um, but both as a as an older brother and a dad. It got me on the feels level. Just just so good. Um, but on the movie side, it's such a fun movie. It's hilarious. You got the two Peters. So you got um, Tom Holland, who is Peter Parker in the MCU, and Chris Pratt, who is uh, Peter Quill in the MCU. We, we call them the two Peters. So I couldn't remember their Ian and Barley. So, man, with uh, Gwyneth... Is it Gwynetha? Gwyneva? The, the van and the... So good. Um, I don't see this ever jumping the next two based on how much I liked them growing up as a kid. But this is a phenomenal movie. Five stars. Easily. Came out of nowhere. Didn't expect... The first time I watched this, it was on Disney+. Plus. So I went out of my way to buy this on 4K because I just love and adore this movie. If you haven't checked this out, go out of your way to watch it. I don't even care if you stop this video right now. You're not missing much. Go watch this movie. It's so good. I, I just slid it in front of my face. Fantastic. The next two films are very nostalgic for me. It, you, you can probably guess what they are. Um, Toy Story 2. The Jessie scene made me emotional as a kid. So the scene with Jessie and her, her owner, um, Sally, Sarah. I'm terrible with names if you haven't gathered that. Man, even as a kid, I was like, that's sad as shit. Now as an adult, I didn't feel, it wasn't as big a feel for me. I'm sure it was as a kid, you know, oh, I miss all my toys or I don't want to ever be that guy. I am that guy, everybody is. You get rid of toys. It's called being an adult. Um, ignore those. But such a good movie. So good. It's a. It's one of the worthwhile, it's the most worthwhile sequel. Say only second to, um, or the only second to the, right after this is Incredibles 1 and 2. Because they're, they're right there. Uh, and for all intents and purposes, I like Coco more than Incredibles 1. I'm going to change that. Uh, so you heard it here first, breaking news. Coco moves up even further. So, But a, a really worthwhile sequel. I love the Buzz Lightyear, um, not Bane, not Vader, Zerg. Love the Buzz Lightyear Zerg stuff in here. Hilarious. Uh, the Collector with the, the scene where the collector fixes Woody and paints over the feet. That's one of the most satisfying scenes in all of Pixar. Just so good. The Chicken Man. They, they did the Buzz Lightyear animated sequels. Or sequel show. Spun off of this. Awesome. Uh, it's the original cast. In the, the original cast um, as intended. Or not as intended. It's the original cast with the original audio. In the third film, uh, the, the, the Slinky has been recast. In the fourth film, Slinky... Because he passed away, not because of anything the studio did. And in the fourth film, it's all archival Mr. Potato Head footage because they've both passed. Um, which which is sad. Uh, but it's cool to hear them all in this. And it's like I said, I really do think they should have stopped after this film. It's Toy Story 1 and Toy Story 2, they were like almost back-to-back. -back. I think there's only one movie. I think just Bugs Life is in between them. So I don't want to get on my Toy Story soapbox here, but... We're going to continue because my my favorite Pixar movie of all time, Toy Story. Again, these 4K steelbooks, man. So cool. Um, it's just an adorable film. Uh, I have I have most of this film memorized. I had the VHS tape of this. I had to buy three of them, I believe, because you could wear the tape out. Um, and I had, I, you know, 
multiple houses, parents, a kid of divorce, blah, blah, blah. I Everywhere I owned, everywhere I went, they had a copy of this film because I loved it. I, I could watch this so many times. This film is actually downloaded to my wife's phone on Disney Plus for my son to watch, um, like Cars is on mine, because, you know, technology and kids and everything and long car rides hey no big deal anyway back to toy story love this film i'll never not love this film uh it's one of those it's one of them if i if i see it on tv i catch it on tv i kind of got to watch the whole thing um if it's on i'll watch it if it you know i'll go out of my way to watch it i think we watched this semi recently he was really young the first time we watched this he being my son um so he didn't quite understand and now he's toy storied out and he's got a uh, you know, a, a replica Woody a doll. I wouldn't call it a figure because it's it's mostly jeans. But uh, really adore this movie. Um, top, top, top of the Pixar movie. Um, the the top three are pretty much they're set in stone. I don't see two, Toy Story two is never going to jump Toy Story one, and Onward is never going to jump either of these two uh, because of the nostalgia. Is Onward better than Toy Story? I don't know, but. I love Toy Story. When I think Pixar, I think Toy Story. And then Toy Story 2. And then when I think recent Pixar, I gotta think Onward. So, I, I can't imagine there's a world where someone hates this movie. But I could be wrong. I'm sure, especially if you didn't grow up. If you're watching Toy Story 1 for the first time in 2021, you might not get it. You might not understand. It's toys are out of print, and you just, you got your tablets and stuff now. And Toy Story, for me, for my demographics, perfect. And growing up with it was phenomenal. But we've gone 36 and a half minutes, so that's all 23 Pixar movies. Holy crap, I think it's dinner time now. I've been in here so long. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments, in one comment. Do not make 23 individual comments. I don't know why someone did on the MCU video, but they do. So please don't do that. Feel free to rank them. I read all of the lists, and I'd like to know because rankings are really just opinions. Um... So I'd love to know your guys' thoughts. Thoughts on my list for sure. That can be a separate comment. And then your ranking of the Pixar movies. You know, I'll respond to all of them. I read all the lists. I appreciate you guys watching, especially if you stuck through almost 40 minutes. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out all my links in the descriptions. I have a whole playlist on ranking videos. I never talk about my playlists on the channel. I mean, I've ranked Pic uh, Pixar, Spider-Man, MCU, DCEU, uh, Kevin Smith Films. Spider-Man. I think that's all of them. Not, not many um, ranking videos, but they're all out there. Uh, what's what's another one? X-Men. X-Men films. Anyway, links in the description to the podcast I co-host with Mr. Crazy Joe. Drops on Friday mornings. Uh, Letterbox and TV time. We're rating to view all of the movies, including this list right now is on Letterbox And TV shows I, I uh, watch. We got my eBay page where I fund, review, or fund, trade, sell stuff for the collection. Blu-ray.com where I rent, where I catalog it all. Um, Instagram and Twitter where I do Instagram and Twitter stuff. All in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you later, YouTube. Thanks for watching. If you stuck around, man, good on you. Hey, have you liked yet? Have you subscribed yet? Go ahead and smash that notification bell, and also check out this additional video that you may or may not enjoy this additional playlist that you'll probably enjoy it contains this video and also go ahead and uh show that subscribe button some love i would highly appreciate it